Hi folks, in my previous videos I got a bunch of comments like hey what are your render settings or is it Luminor path tracing? So in this video I've decided to share my render settings with you. Let's dive right in. Now before we get started make sure to check the description if you're interested in purchasing the assets and characters used in this scene. And let's head over to the plugin section and from there I will search for and activate two essential plugins, Movie Render Queue and Apple ProRes Media. These plugins are key for achieving high quality renders and also video format. Just keep in mind that activating them will require a restart. Now let's jump back into the sequence and from this three dot button, make sure you've checked the Movie Render Queue and once that's done, click on it to open the render window. And from here we have access to all the settings for the render queue. Now I don't want my renders to be in JPEG format so let's delete that and bring the anti-aliasing. Now this guy smooths out the edges of objects and helps eliminate the jacked pixelated look ensuring a cleaner and more polished render. And inside it we have two key sections to focus on. Special sample count which controls the number of samples taken for each pixel and I will set this to 1 for efficiency and temporal sample count which determines how many frames are sampled over time to improve motion and reduce noise. I will set this to 7 to strike a balance between quality and rendering time. Additionally, I will check the override anti-aliasing option and set the method to TSR which is temporal super resolution and it is a modern and highly effective method that provides excellent visual results especially for dynamic scenes by using temporal information to enhance the resolution and smoothness of the render. Now when it comes to spatial and temporal sample count there are lots of guides out there suggesting different combinations like 2 and 16, 8 and 8 or other values but after experimenting with various setups I've personally found the best results with 1 for spatial and 7 for temporal. It's important to note that increasing these values doesn't always guarantee better renders. In fact, sometimes higher values can unnecessarily increase render times without providing noticeable improvements in quality. So this is my preferred render setup. It's not necessarily the best settings universally, but it works best for my projects and workflow. Your ideal settings might vary depending on your scene, hardware, and rendering requirements. So feel free to experiment and find what works best for you. Now let's add the Apple ProRes option so we can export our render as a video. ProRes is a high quality codec commonly used in professional post-production workflows and our engine supports it for seamless rendering of cinematic content. In the settings for Apple ProRes, the first and most important option is the codec. Here you can choose between different ProRes formats based on the quality and bit depth you need. I'll typically select either Apple ProRes 422 which renders in 10 bits color depth providing excellent quality while keeping the file size manageable or Apple ProRes 422 HQ which renders in 12 bit color depth. This is a higher quality option perfect for projects that require exceptional detail and color accuracy especially when you're working with HDR footage or need more flexibility in post-production. Choosing between these options depends on your specific needs. If you want faster rendering and smaller files, go for ProRes 422. But if you're aiming for the highest quality and working with heavy post-production edits, ProRes 422 HQ is the way to go. Next, I will add the color output to the render settings and from its options, I will check the disabled tone curve settings. This option is really useful when you want a more neutral and flat color profile, giving you better control over the color space in post-production. By disabling the tone curve, you avoid the automatic contrast and tone adjustments applied by Unreal Engine, allowing you to fine tune the look of your render more accurately in tools like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or any other post-production softwares. It's a small adjustment, but it makes a big difference if you're planning to work on your color grading and overall visual tone after rendering. 
Finally, let's head over to the output settings. Here, I will set the resolution to 2K. I think this resolution is a logical choice because it balances quality and performance, and you can always upscale to 4K in post-production softwares for the final export if needed. Next, I will choose a location to save my render. This is an important step to keep your projects organized. After that, I will double check that the frame rate is set to 24 FPS. This frame rate is essential for achieving that cinematic motion blur, which adds a natural and immersive look to the final render. And finally, I will specify the range of frames I want to render, ensuring I capture only the exact moments needed for my animation or scenes. And with all of this set, my render is ready to go. And that wraps up my render settings in Unreal Engine. These settings are what work best for me and my workflow, but remember every project is unique, so feel free to experiment and find what works best for you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with others who might benefit from these tips. Also, check the description for links to all the assets and tools I've used. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.